This is the story of how the sea helps the otters and the other animals which survive on this wild shore throughout the year. of life are the ocean currents flowing to the west of Scotland. The greatest is a branch of the Gulf Stream. These currents transform the lives of everything they touch. Otters. They are a typical, very close family. Both the little cubs are female, about four months old. Our otters have a difficult year ahead of them, especially the mother. She has to teach her cubs everything she knows, and that really does mean everything. They can't even swim properly. When she dives, they try to follow but they just bob up like corks. Still, at least they won't drown. All the cubs can do is watch anxiously from the surface while their mother fishes for them. Or they might just manage to grab something themselves in the shallows. It's worked. This is this cub's first catch. He doesn't really know what to do with it, but otters wouldn't be otters if they couldn't adapt. Still, she'd do better if she didn't eat the shell. She'll learn. Beside them, on some of Scotland's most exposed beaches, the grey seals have just had their young. They have no escape from being sandblasted by the bitter wind. Unlike our female otter, the mother seals can do little to help their pups, except to suckle them as much as possible. They have exceptionally rich milk. The mothers quickly lose weight. They are pumping energy into their pups, building up the layers of fat, 10 centimeters thick, which will keep them warm for the rest of their lives. At the moment, the seal pups are even more helpless than our young otters, but they must catch up. Before they are three weeks old, their mothers will abandon them. On their own, the young seals will follow the otter family into the hostile sea. Winter is a desperate time for them all. Thrashed by storms, these coastal waters have grown cold. There is little here to feed a young seal or otter. The waves pool at last year's kelp, shredding it and sweeping it towards the shore. But for some animals, the storms bring relief from famine. Red deer have exhausted their grazing on the hills, and on the point of starvation, they've come down to the beaches in search of kelp. They share it with wild goats.
Hidden in the rotting depths of the weed are masses of kelp flies, a treat for many birds on a cold day. But the insects are more than that. For these colourful crows, they're a lifeline. They're called chuffs, and they're better known around the Mediterranean. Cold winters should make it impossible for chuffs to live this far north, but this coast is special. At this latitude in Canada, the Atlantic is frozen solid, but here, something keeps the sea alive all winter. Ocean currents flow from the tropics towards the Scottish coast, and they carry a surprising cargo. Not only flotsam, like the occasional coconut, they also bring heat. It's a colossal amount, 30,000 times more energy than all the power generated in Britain. The water stored this heat away as it flowed beneath the southern sun, and now as the currents give it back, they warm the whole of Europe. In the winter, no one needs their help more than our otters. This is the cub's father. At the moment, both he and his family need every ounce of this skill just to stay alive. The mother faces a crisis. For the first time, one of her cubs has refused to follow her. The seawater is sapping their energy. And although they came back for her, this cub is almost too cold to care. The currents may keep the sea from freezing, but it's still cold. It would kill a human in an hour. The cub is torn between keeping warm and following, but she must eat. If they have to leave her behind, she will certainly starve. She goes. Putting her trust in her mother's hunting skills is better than staying alone on the winter shore. The male plays no part in his family's affairs. Even he struggles to keep warm, and he's only got himself to feed. He spends as little time as possible in the sea. His territory covers 20 kilometers, but he knows almost every stone. He goes immediately to search where he's found fish before. No luck yet. The fish, of course, know how to be difficult. A sea scorpion becomes just another encrusted rock, fooling even a brittle star. He's a very skilled hunter. It's exceptionally difficult to catch fish in their own environment, but even so, he still has to land the sea scorpion to deal with its spines. The fish pushes them outwards, ready to stab, but he's done this many times before. He carefully finds the right grip and bites them off. As the air grows warmer, it picks up water from the ocean and carries it ashore. Winter is over, and with their moisture, these clouds will wake up the land.
With the rain, the spring arrives. To our male, rain means fresh water. It's essential. He's not a sea otter. He's a river animal who's learned to live on the coast. And after every few hours in the sea, he has to clean the salt from his fur. Salt crystals would separate his fine hairs, ruining their exquisite insulation. A coast without fresh water cannot support a single otter. No wonder our male looks after his fur so carefully. His life depends on its warmth and on the freshwater pools which are so vital for keeping it clean. The young seals are thriving. Kept warm by blubber rather than fur, they are not troubled by salt or by cold. They are free of the land. Able to stay afloat for weeks on end, they have opened the sea's enormous larder. This year's young ones will range far from the Scottish islands where they were born, perhaps even as far as Iceland. In spring, the current's warmth moves further inshore bringing the sea back to life. Cuckoo wrasse come out of hibernation. Like the chuffs, they come from the Mediterranean and they need their water warm. Putting on their spring colors, the males flaunt themselves, attracting harems of females which pluck their food from the current. The water picks up speed when it's channeled by the land. Most life has to be well anchored. And deeper, where there's too little light for plants, every splash of color is an animal. A colony of soft corals called dead man's fingers shelter a spider crab. Like the crab, starfish and brittle stars run the risk of being swept away, but by linking their arms together, they make a living carpet, holding fast in the life-giving currents. All these animals live the same way, by snatching food from the passing water. Although these look like minute sea anemones, they are quite different creatures. They are preparing to launch their young on an ocean voyage. Absorbing their feeding arms, in their place they grow long stacks of discs. Every disc is a brand new moon jellyfish, just a few millimeters across. They'll be carried wherever the currents take them, in the microscopic floating world of the plankton. These miniature jellyfish will feed continuously, catching animals even smaller than themselves. With the increasing light of spring, the sea blooms with billions of lives. And following the plankton, grazing on it, come giants, basking sharks. 
These three or four ton sharks appear every spring. In just a few months, they can eat enough plankton to last them a whole year. No one knows where they go after their intense feeding season. They just disappear. The sharks are a sign of how rich the sea becomes when its warm currents join forces with the sunlight of spring. And now summer is approaching the coast. The chill has finally left the shore where our family of otters lives. Their lives should become easier now, but have the cubs both survived? She's done it. She's brought both of them safely through. They've even grown. And now the sea's warmed up, she'll be able to feed her family without difficulty. For the otters, at last, the summer is a chance to rest. Whenever they set out to fish, the family leave their droppings, or sprints, as a message to put off other otters. Don't waste your time here, they say. We've caught these fish already. But perhaps that's just wishful thinking. Although the cubs are now as large as their mother, when it comes to fishing, they're still beginners. Every day, she shows them something new, like this butterfish. On every tide, the butterfish swim in from deeper water. And that's lucky for the family because they are easy to catch, even for the clumsy cubs. By following their mother closely, the cubs are learning which rocks might shelter a fish. Slowly, they are gaining the expertise which will one day keep them alive. Few places are safe from the otters, and they are in great demand. An octopus has claimed the butterfish's hiding place. Although they can change color to blend into the surroundings, octopuses still need shelter, and now two of them want the same cave. The intruder backs off, but it may have lost more than it realizes. Terrified, the octopus abandons its camouflage, but nothing will persuade our male otter to give up this meal. Octopuses are his favorite prey, and like many of the things he hunts, they are very seasonal. Butterfish are an exception. His daughters can munch them all year, but to catch anything else, they'll have to learn when to hunt, as well as where. Our family share their coast with several other females, but the cub's father is the only male. 
Other males would have to fight him if they wanted to settle here. And in the past, he's always won. But now, well, he's not quite as strong as he used to be. His teeth are worn out and sore, but his territory still means life. It feeds him and his mates, and he's not about to give it up. By rubbing his scent onto the weed, he restates his claim. Everything here depends on the sea. It even enriches the land. These shells, ground into sand by the Atlantic, will fertilize the island soils and bring the land to life. These unique meadows, called Macha, are a haven for rare migrants, like the corncrake. And the resident ringed plovers. In the summer, they are full of food. When they brought their cattle here, people made the Macha even better for birds. By keeping the grass short, the cows make this an ideal place for lapwings and dunlin to nest. And because they're isolated by a wild sea, the islands have always been safe from predators. Until now. People have helped a new animal cross the water, and it spells trouble for the birds. On a whim, someone released a handful of hedgehogs here a few decades ago. And now, there are about 5,000 of them, munching their way across the macha every evening, looking for beetles and slugs, but if they sniff out a nest, well, so much the better. This Dunlin's been very lucky. She's kept her eggs, and they've hatched. Her chicks will be able to leave the nest as soon as they can master their enormous feet. People are trying to solve the hedgehog problem but something much larger may threaten everything on the coast. The world's climate is changing, and if the currents in the ocean change with it, the Gulf Stream could be diverted away from Scotland. It sounds strange, but scientists predict that global warming could make it much colder here. The effects are unknown, but our otters would certainly notice a difference. They can barely survive here as it is, and unless the colder water brought a lot more fish, their lives would become impossible. If this change does come, the seas west of Scotland may never again be as rich as they are now. The moon jellyfish, once so tiny, have grown to the size of plates. Sometimes they gather in their millions, perhaps to mate, but the truth is that no one knows.
common dolphins join the jellyfish. They are just one of 25 kinds of whales and dolphins which visit the waters west of Scotland. Travelling in pods of up to a hundred, the dolphins have come here to hunt for fish. Sprats and herring thrive in these plankton-rich waters. Every seabird in Scotland seems to have joined the search for them. Guillemots and razorbills herd the shoal, every fish straining to reach the centre of the mass for safety from the darting birds. Breaking the surface only makes things worse. Kittyweights join the frenzy, then shearwaters. The birds may have travelled a hundred kilometres to find this bonanza, so they don't hold back. The excitement draws other birds in from all around. The fish panic, spinning out in a confused line, while the gulls pick off the slowest. They struggle to regroup, but the commotion has not gone unnoticed. Their tight ball now makes them a convenient mouthful for the largest predator in the Scottish seas. Ton minky whale engulfs the entire shoal. Several thousand of them visit the west coast in summer. They return year after year throughout lives which may be as long as our own. The seas to the west of Scotland are among the world's richest, so they support world class seabird colonies, some of them with up to a million birds. Guillemots crowd every suitable cliff. No other bird packs more densely together. They're just five centimeters apart. And of course, there are puffins. <laughs> With so many birds concentrated like this, they are bound to attract trouble. Somewhere among this mass of puffins, one bird will forget to look up, and the black-headed gulls will make it pay.
Our young otters are finally becoming more independent. They're even brave enough to leave their mother's side these days, providing the other one comes too. By testing their strength as they play, they've started learning from each other, as well as having fun. Both the young otters are mainly hunting crabs, of all things. They're not great food, so the otters have to catch a lot, but repeated practice has made them fast and efficient. As in everything the otters do, the secret is not to waste a second. And with this catch, their rolling game proves its worth. Disorientated? the crab has no chance to use its claws while the otter finds her grip. And as soon as she has it facing away, she can safely bring it ashore. It's been a long time since she stood here perplexed by her first crab. During their first year, both the young otters have learned to catch and quickly deal with scores of different prey. Each one has its own difficulties, but they've mastered the ball. Eat the shell? No chance. Now the easy days of summer are coming to an end. The young otters will need all their hard-earned knowledge to survive the less forgiving times ahead. Autumn comes to the west coast on the wings of wild geese. Tempered by the ocean, this coast seldom feels frost. It's a haven for barnacle geese and red deer alike. There'll be lush grazing here well into the winter for the geese and the stags. Every day, the flocks leave for safe roosting places far out on the tidal flats. The atmosphere draws energy from the warm sea. It adds extra power to the first of autumn's many storms. This is more than the cubs can cope with on their own. They've rejoined their mother. Her experience matters to them now more than ever before. To hunt in these wild seas puts them all in real danger.
The storm has killed one of our otters. But it's not a cub. It's their father. He was just five years old. Most otters live no longer than this. Even helped by the warm currents, they live on a knife edge in the stormy embrace of the Atlantic. The seals fare much better. The storms even help them by isolating their breeding islands from the world. The price of their excellence in the sea is that seals are awkward on land, but the storms guarantee that they'll have their beaches to themselves. It's nearly pupping time again, and even though they won't mate until after the pups are born, violence flares among the males. They are fighting for control of the beaches which the female seals like best. The females are returning. These are the same seals which gave birth here last year. But unlike the mother otter, who has been tied to her young since they were born, the seals haven't even seen their pup since they left here almost a year ago. They've been free to rebuild their reserves for their new pups, ready for this brief but grueling time ashore. For the next three weeks, the females won't eat at all, but by then their pups will have trebled in weight, and for these mothers, lighter by almost a half, it will be time to go. Then, unguided, this new generation of young seals will be ready to take its own share of the sea's riches. Our otters' lives could hardly have been more different. It has taken the cubs a year and a half, but they've survived everything the Atlantic has dealt them. And finally, they are ready to strike out alone. Although there's just time for one last game. Our youngsters might have only a few years ahead of them on the demanding shores of Scotland's west coast, but they'll live them to the full. They have mates to find, and soon they could be teaching their own families everything they need to know about being otters in the stream of life.